Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how to double the amount of cards for the recent July 2021 sheet load of cards without having to double the pattern paper. And I also have a couple more tips along the way to maybe help make these cards a little easier to put together. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I shared the brand new sheet load July 2021, I let you know that there was a way to get double the cards without having to double the pattern paper. And I asked if you would be interested in seeing that. And the overwhelming response was yes. So I'm back today to show you how to do that. And I have another free printable for you so that you'll have those instructions right in front of you. So here is a look at that add-on printable for the month, which is free to all of my subscribers. And I will be telling you at the end of this video how you can download it. For now, what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about the supplies I'll be using today, show you what I already pre-made, and then show you how to cut those pattern papers per the new instructions. Before we get to that though, I just wanted to stop really quickly and ask you, have you seen the collaboration team's cards this month? I know I say it every month that they amaze me, but after watching their videos, seeing their blog posts, seeing their Instagram posts, I think each one made this set their own in some way. Whether it was Chelsea who added some pattern paper to the background of her cards, or Karen who actually made hers into a card that would fold and stand up, and then I also had a couple people update the holes for the twine a little bit to make it easier, and I'm actually going to show you today kind of what they did. As always, my collaborators are listed in that description box below. So if you haven't yet went to see their projects this month, I really hope you will. I know that you're going to be super inspired just like I was. Now, not only did I get some ideas for today from my collaboration team, but when I talked about some issues I was having with that first set I made, I had so many great suggestions in the comments from subscribers. So I'll be sharing some of those today as well as we go along. Let's go ahead and see what products I'll be using today. For my pattern papers today, I chose the two in the back here, and these are from the same paper pad I used for my first set this month, which was a Park Lane paper pad from Joanne. Now up on screen now is a look at the first set of cards I made. I have written in almost all of these already to go out to subscribers and channel members, so I didn't bring them on camera with me. I will be using this buttercream twine from the twinery and anybody, I think they have went out of business or I can't find them, but does anybody know of a place that sells like they did just a bunch of different colored twines because I miss it. If you can leave a link or a company name in that comment section below, that would be awesome. For my sentiment, I'm using this stamp set from Momenta. I got this at Hobby Lobby for just a few dollars, and I just like the different sentiments it has. As you can see by the pieces that I've already pre-stamped, I'm using the Hello stamp from this. I did go ahead and get out my Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus ink because I thought it went well with the leaves in the pattern paper. I use the Park Lane Diagonal Stripe Embossing Folder on the background piece of my card. And from the holes or the notches in my cards today, once again, I use that 1 8 inch hole punch and I believe this is from Fiskars. Besides the products that I just mentioned, I did have to double the card stocks as called for in the original printable. So you need eight for the background and eight for the folded card. And down here for my circles for my sentiment, I actually used some scraps that were left over from making the card bases. So I didn't need this. This is a great time for you to use up some scraps instead of getting out new full sheets if you don't have to. 
let's get crafty. Before I get to that, I do have a couple channel member shout outs. I would like to say a great big welcome and thank you to my two newest paper trimmer level members, Jane Lubering and Margot Young. Thank you so much ladies for your support. Because I have already shown you the complete process of putting a set of these together, today I'm really just going to show you how to cut the pattern papers and put together one card. And I'll finish the rest off camera and give you a look at those at the end of the video. Now if you haven't yet seen that process video, which goes from beginning to end for 12 cards and has a lot more tips in it, I will link it in the description box below so you can check it out when you're done here. Also in the description box below is a link to the debut for July where you can find out how to download the printable for free. Now I'm going to show you a few things I did in advance to get ready to make today's set. I spent a couple hours earlier cutting all the cardstock, doing the embossing, tying the twine, getting the bases adhered together so that now all I have to do is cut my pattern paper and place it onto that front card. Now a couple things I do want to point out, because I was making so many cards, I'm a little bit more on the frugal side and I didn't want to use up a whole bunch of my colored cardstock. So what I did is I just used my standard white cardstock for the base and for the folded card. And to kind of help tell the difference between those two or add a little bit more interest since there is so much white here, I did emboss the background piece. So you can see here that you can tell a difference between those two and it's just a little bit more texture and makes it look a little bit different than the card that is on the top. Now you'll also notice here, instead of putting holes in from the edge and having to thread the twine through there and tie it, I put notches at the top and bottom and thread it around that. This was something that a couple collaboration team members did and I'm like, light bulb, that is so much easier. But I will tell you that when I said I was having troubles getting the twine through those holes or I used DMC floss, I had a lot of great suggestions in the comment section. A lot of people told me something about a dental loop. I think that's what it was called. And so I'm guessing it's kind of like a big needle threader, which is another suggestion that I got. And I actually have one of those around here someplace, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for that other tool and put that in my arsenal. Let me know below if you have any other ideas on how to make that easier if you did punch the holes into the card like the sketch calls for. I did only prepare 23 because I wanted to show you a couple things on that 24th card base that I did for today and to make things a little easier. In front of me is the embossed card background, the pre-scored, adhered, and folded card base that will go on the front, about a 13 inch length of twine, and then a pair of reverse tweezers. And what reverse tweezers are is they are closed or gripping unless you open them. The opposite of normal tweezers. I had a viewer tell me a way to use these to help me tie the knot and it worked like a charm on all those other cards so I wanted to show you that. And I almost forgot my hole punch. So instead of punching into the card and making a template and punching the rest like I did on that first video, I'm actually going to make a notch with this. So I just try to eyeball it and I put it so the punchy part is about halfway in to the paper because I just want to notch on each end kind of like that. And I'm going to do that on both sides. You just kind of want to center it on that line before you punch. And there you go. Now these aren't perfectly, you know, centered or the same size, but when you get the twine through there, nobody is going to know the difference. And let me tell you this again, made it much easier. So what I did to get my twine on there, I started with it on top and I left, I don't know, maybe about a half an inch down here hanging off the card, just so I knew I would have some when I was done to tie. So I wrap it around the top once, 
twice and then when I bring it back up I'm going to tie the knot. Now what I want to do to kind of gather all of these pieces together is I take that top one and wrap it down and around all of those pieces and then that kind of holds them together. Then I adjust the tightness and where I want my knot to be and that's where these tweezers come into play. You just kind of snap them around the bulk of where that comes together and then that holds it in place while you tie the knot. When I was doing it earlier, I had my finger in there trying to help me hold it down while I was still trying to tie and that was kind of a pain. But this works so nicely, then you just take off the tweezers and tighten it. And then you can of course just trim those ends. Much easier and quicker. Thank you so much to the subscriber who suggested that. Now I'm going to show you how to cut down those pattern papers and then we'll put this one card together and I'll finish the rest off screen. Now at the end of the video I'll come back with a look at all of those cards and tell you how to download the new free printable. Here's another look at that additional page that you'll be able to download and me finding out that this could make 24 cards was kind of a fluke and kind of a funny story. This is actually the original page minus the doubling of these card stocks that I sent to my collaboration team. And then I believe it was Lisa who said, um, for some reason I can make 24 cards, not 12. Because of course that first page said this would make 12 cards. I'm like, oh my goodness, that is way too many for a sheet load of cards. I will fix that. And I sent them out a new file. Well, some of you who wanted to know how to double it, it was very handy that I already had this laid out. You can get 12 of each piece from one piece of pattern paper, which means in the end you'll have 24 cards if you double that card stock. Now what we'll be doing today is, like these bottom pieces, they're one inch wide by two and a quarter inches tall. So we're going to cut the two and a quarter inches off the bottom and then cut these into one inch pieces. Now when you do cut them into one inch pieces, don't let it be a generous one inch. And what I mean by that, actually let's go ahead and just start cutting the pattern paper. So like I said, we'll cut two and a quarter inches off the bottom of this piece. And then I'm going to turn it to start cutting the one inch pieces. Now normally when I cut pieces, I will do what I call a generous cut. And all I mean by that is, if you look at the line where the one inch is, so I'm actually going to be cutting over here on the left. So when I normally cut one inch, I go to the outside of that thicker black line. But if I do that for these, I'm going to get one piece at the end that is quite a bit skinnier than the rest. So when I cut mine today, I'm going to make sure that it's on the inside of that dark black line. Now the one at the end might be a little bit smaller, but not as, as noticeable as if you did a generous one inch every time. Now I'm just going to line it up again where I told you before on the inside of that dark line. And I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to push this down another inch. This is a great thing about this trimmer is it has some markings on the left and right of the cut guide. So you don't have to realign it every time to the one inch mark on this side. Now on this last cut, instead of going all the way to where I normally would, what I'm going to do is center it between the two one inch markings. And that way at least these will be a little bit more of the same size. And really they're not that far off. So line that up. And because it's pretty tight there on my fingers, I'm going to bring in a piece of scotch blue removable tape to hold this in place while I cut. And now we have those 12 one inch pieces for the left sides. And now for the top part where we're going to cut our 12 four by two and a quarter inch pieces. Once again, when we cut the four inches, we do not want a generous four inches because otherwise that last piece won't be as close to four inches as it can. Because sometimes these 12 by 12 papers are just a smidge under 12 inches. So I'm going to cut those three strips first and then turn each one around and cut them to the height of two and a quarter. 
While I work on cutting those, I thought it would be a great time for the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question comes from channel member Karen C. And she would like to know, do you make your own envelopes or do you use store-bought for your cards? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you have answered and would like me to see it. Almost all of my envelopes are store bought, but I do have an envelope maker and I really should get it out and make some envelopes out of those 12 by 12 papers I'm probably never going to use on a card. Now I'm going to turn them and do the two and a quarter inch cuts and just like the one inch cut, I do have a two and a quarter inch mark here on the left that I will be using and just push my paper down as I go. While I work on cutting these down, I do want to give you a heads up about a live event this weekend. If you are watching this video in the first couple days that it is live on YouTube, on Saturday, July 10th at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, my sister Lisa and I will be back live for another Oh So Inspired. Starting this week, channel members will be able to submit inspiration pieces and if you join us live, you can submit a sabotage idea. I hope you'll join us. I will have the video linked in the description box below so you can go set a reminder. Now my 24 pieces from that one piece of pattern paper are done and I'm gonna cut the second paper, which is kind of a watercolor wash in the same style as those flowers or the same colors. I'm gonna do the same cuts on this. I'll be right back. Now all 48 pieces of my pattern paper are cut down, but before I put together a card, I almost forgot that I had some tips about the sentiment piece. So let's go ahead and look at that. So the original printable for this month has you cut six three inch circles and then cut each of those in half for your sentiment with just a little bit being cut off the right edge. Well, for my channel members, I gave them some cut and print files that would make this part a little bit easier if they didn't have circle dies or didn't want to fuss with all the other stuff. So now I'm going to show you how I used one of those free cut files to go ahead and cut out these pieces from scraps. Now, if you're not a channel member already and you would like more information, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. I would say at least once a month, I give away another free printable or cut file of some sort among the other perks. When you cut down your cardstocks for those backer pieces, you have a strip here that is two and a quarter inches wide. And I ended up with a lot of those and I didn't want them to go to the recycle bin or have to wait a really long time for me to use them. So what I did is I put some of these onto a cutting mat and cut out these shapes. On screen now is a look at what it looked like before I cut it in my Silhouette software. And here's what the cut piece looked like when it was out of the cutter. So it might be kind of hard to see the difference on screen, but I do have five strips of that white card stock that was left over from cutting those bases. Now I did already use one strip to just test it out and do my sample stamps, but now all I need to do is just tear away the outside and then take off each of my sentiment pieces. Since I had already stamped the samples, my hello stamp is already set up in my Misty. Now I told you that I got these stamps for just a few dollars at Hobby Lobby and you know sometimes when you buy cheaper stamps they're really squishy. I can't remember what they're called but they're not photopolymer. Well sometimes with those stamps it also doesn't take the ink very well. So I wanted to show you a little trick that I do to help with kind of some of that splotchiness when you stamp with a cheaper stamp. And hey, I am all about saving money, so I love these stamps and I'm definitely going to keep using them even though they're not as high a quality. What I do is ink my stamp up first with Versamark and then put my color ink on top of that. Now when I notice that the quality isn't 
as great again or it starts to get a little bit lower, I clean off my stamp and re-ink with the Versamark and stamp. But you can get a few with just one inking of Versamark. And I set it up just so I put my piece right down here in the corner each time and it will stamp where I want it. I will tell you the Misty, even though it is expensive in my opinion, it has been worth its weight in gold and I'm glad that I saved up to get it. I'm going to keep stamping and then I'll come back on and show you how to put together one of those cards. All 24 sentiments are stamped and ready to go. I did have to clean off my stamp and reapply the Versamark two times besides what you saw me do on camera. Now let's go ahead and put one of these together. Just like with that original process video, you need a piece A and a piece B from the two different pattern papers and your sentiment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my sentiment on first. You don't have to do this. And you could also apply your sentiment with some foam tape or dimensionals if you wanted to. And then this piece gets adhesive on the back. And it gets added to the big right section. And I just try to get as even borders as I can and kind of lay it down gently. And I don't push it down firmly until I know that everything looks okay and I can adjust it if I need it and then you put on the side strip. The only thing about putting on the twine before the pattern paper is, you gotta make sure that you keep this out of the way when you adhere those pieces down. So here is one of today's cards finished where I showed you how to cut that pattern paper to double the yield amount for the July 2021 sheet load of cards. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all 24 and I'll tell you how you can download that free printable. Now this is what I call a sheet load of cards. Here are all 24 cards finished. Now it did take some extra time, but if you were gonna make this layout for Christmas cards, you can at least get a bunch done with just a couple pieces of paper and that card stock. Now you might've noticed a new addition to the cards since I last spoke to you. I decided when I was putting them together that this looked just a little too plain. So what I did is I got out a die I have. This is a discontinued um, Spellbinders by Richard Garay die. But I know that if you don't have something like this currently, lots of companies still make kind of leafy, viney things like this. But I thought by cutting some scraps of the green asparagus cardstock and adding that to the back, that that just kind of made the sentiment pop a little bit and added a little more interest to the card. I did cut out another one for this card, but because I already glued it down, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of surgery. So I will do that off camera later, but I just want you to see the completed set. And now I'm gonna tell you how you can download that add-on printable for free. As always, the printables I share here in videos are meant for my channel subscribers. If you're not already subscribed, it's quick, free, and easy. Just click on that button below the video, and I'd also love it if you would click on that bell for notifications. But if you are a subscriber, down at the very bottom of my description box is a link to this one-page PDF. You can open it and just view it on screen, or you can print it out in color like I have, or in black and white, and it will work just fine. Right below the link, it does say something about watch the video for a password. Your password is actually just watching the video to this point to find out how to download it. So no password will be needed when you go to get the file. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I always appreciate a thumbs up. Until the next one, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.